Hello everybody, welcome to a reading vlog. I'm doing a reading vlog. I'm doing a reading vlog. I just filmed a TBR. I'm, I'm, I'm back. I am back and it's exciting. Yeah, film the TBR. The question is, will I edit it? Because that's always where things go wrong. <laughs> okay, I actually filmed a vlog for last week, but I don't like any of the clips. So we're just gonna scrap it. I might insert some of the filler clips I made just so that I don't have to do that much work this week. Okay, don't touch me. Anyway, this week we are reading some good old gems, some classic YA books, starting off with City of Bones. I have started reading this last night. Only um six books, six books, six pages in, because it was pretty busy last night or yesterday. Um, but I started reading it on audio and I'm reading along with the audiobook because I've never experienced audiobook with these books, so I'm super excited and only six pages in and they're at pandemonium club and i'm gonna be spoiling this book because it's city of bones like the show came out the movie came out so many new releases like so many new editions of the book came out everybody has had ample time to start this series so if you haven't started it by now you probably won't start it because it's super old and it's very YA written so i'm gonna spoil it okay so the book starts off at Pandemonium Club, which is an all-ages club, which I have never been to. I know some friends of mine used to go to all-ages clubs when we were in high school. It just does not sound the safest. But anyway, they're at this all-ages club, Simon and Clary, and DJ Bat is the DJ at the club. And if you've read the series, you know that Bat is a, a significant character later on in the series. And I love that. I, this is book, book one, page six. And DJ Bat is in here. He is a character that becomes somebody later on. And I, I freaking love that. Instead of Cassandra Clare just making up a character for, the, for Bat's character, she went back and took this guy who we already kind of were, like we knew him, like he was in our brain, but so buried because he's like so insignificant in here but that's amazing that is like that's a treat for when you reread the series and you see just the the way she just worked everything together i am very excited about reading the rest of this also reading this book it's it's making me want to watch the movie because the movie's kind of bad but it's also like really good and they really got the pandemonium club down really well I like the pandemonium scene better than the show in the movie. I like the movie scene better than the show. The movie scene is very, very close to the book and Isabel's necklace and her dress and what she's wearing and the way she weaves through the crowd. And I'm just really loving this. I'm only six pages in and I'm already obsessed. <laughs> Didn't even meet Jace yet. So pray for me when that happens. Also, I'm going to show you guys something and don't judge me, okay? Because I had to do it. So this is the hardcover copy of City of Bones. And if you have the new copies with like the grayish cover, then you know those books have the map in it. And I wanted that. So I found one of those copies in a thrift store, purchased it, and I ripped out the map and I stuck it in here and then I donated it back to the to the store without the map I just really wanted the map okay and you gotta do what you gotta do I'm thinking now that I probably could have printed it off because it's probably on the internet but nope nope I didn't do that <laughs> everybody it is uh november 4th it is wednesday and i'm pretty sure i started this vlog yesterday but i don't ever know what's going on so 
I guess we'll find out in editing. Okay, so yesterday I started reading City of Bones, and today I am on page 208. I am listening to the audiobook and sometimes reading along, but guys, I'm so happy. Like, this is what I wanted. I love this. Okay, so first of all, I have something tabbed because I completely forgot that Simon was in a band and wow. It just is bringing back all the memories, especially of City of Heavenly Fire at the end when they find Simon at the very end. And if you know what happens, like you know what happened to Simon and they find him and then the band name and <sighs> I love this series so much. Okay, but anyways, some of Simon's band names in the beginning because they kept switching band names are just so ridiculous. But some of my favorites are Rock Solid Panda and Launch Air Crisis. And actually, those two um, band names inspired my very first YouTube channel name because I actually started this channel in 2013? Seven years ago. I started this channel seven years ago, and my channel name was Panda Crisis, and it was mixed between rock solid panda and lawn chair crisis so i just did panda crisis and nobody ever knew what it was from but it was from the Marvel instruments because i was just trash back then <sighs> the memories <laughs> yeah i'm on you know i'm almost halfway through the book and i'm still really loving it like i know that there are some very cliche moments and jace is super annoying and i can acknowledge that now but he was so my type back in the day because I'm pretty sure I was 15 when I read this and Jace was 15 and he and his and Simon's interactions were like very similar to how me and my friends interacted with each other just dripping with sarcasm always insulting each other and trying to come up with like the better insult that's just how we that's just how we rolled back in the day so I loved Jace and Simon in this book back in the day and reading this book again is just there's just way more than the story involved now like reading this is nostalgic it's bringing back the friends i had back in the day who i don't talk to anymore and the good times we had because it was my best friend who made me read this who i don't talk to anymore not because of anything malicious it's just we grew apart but she made me read this she even read pages of it to me to get me into it and just all of these memories are just coming back and i love it i just I really I really love it I love it a lot this is just good times and I remember oh my gosh I'm so dumb I remember reading about church and thinking because he's a blue Persian that he was like a literal blue cat <laughs> he's not blue Persian is an actual breed they're not blue but I thought he was blue <laughs> and that's why the bookmark that I made all those years ago is like a blue cat for church. Uh, he's still blue in my mind, okay? Even though I know better, he's blue and he'll always be blue. And oh my god, there's the scene where Hodge gives her the, I'm wearing my Christmas pants. <laughs> That's very random. There's a scene where Hodge gives her the photo of the circle and it's so similar to Dumbledore's army like old photo that Harry has of like all the parents back in the day man this was truly Harry Potter fanfic and I love it <laughs> it's like eight o'clock what time is it it is eight o'clock pretty much and I'm gonna like get cozy in bed but I don't know if I want to continue reading City of Bones physically or if I want to read something else I actually do have this book that I started reading for my last vlog that I never saw the light of day. I was reading Freddy vs. Jason for Halloween, which is based off of the movie. Yep, the book is based off of the movie, and it's literally the movie just written onto page, so it's quite entertaining because even though that movie is just garbage, it I loved it. I watched it, there was a summer, I'm not even lying, where I would watch it repeatedly, like every night. Um, but last week I started reading it and I'm like almost halfway through so I might um, read some of this tonight because I do really want to finish it. Or I might start Deathly Hallows. 
So it's really like, I have no idea what's happening tonight. I'm so excited though, because I feel like I'm, I'm getting back into the reading mood and it's so much fun. Oh my gosh, how crazy is it that I'm reading the original and the fanfic version? I didn't even plan this. This is just fate. Hello everybody, today is Saturday, November 7th, and I am just popping on here to do a little reading update because I finished City of Bones by Cassandra Clare. I finished listening to the audiobook and I freaking love this, okay? I love this book. I don't know what else to say. I was expecting to have some kind of like negative review. I don't know why this book is just great. <laughs> I'm so happy that I decided to re to reread this, to listen to the audiobook. I loved every second of it. Um, so yeah, I finished that today. Which brings me, because I keep track of all the books I read all the time, and I am now on, so that was book number 24 of the year. So I have only read 24 books this year, which is not bad. I mean, it's literally nothing compared to a lot of other booktubers and what they read. Like, literally some of them read 24 books per month. I don't know how they find that energy. I don't know how they do it. I don't know how they remember the books that they read. I don't know how they like find time to connect to the characters. 24 books a month, like that's a little ridiculous. I'm whatever works, whatever. I mean, I don't really care, but like I could never, I could never. I really like to live as long as I can in one book without it being like too long, obviously, but wow, could never. My personal goal is to get to 35 books by the end of the year, so I need to read 11 books by the end of the year, which I kind of think I can do. If I can read five more books this month, I think I think I could do it. We're gonna try. We're gonna try. I already started reading Daughter of Smoke and Bone, or well, I've been listening to Daughter Daughter of Smoke and Bone. I am on chapter five. And this is also bringing back so many memories. And I'm a little bit more excited about this one because I read this for the first time in one day. In less than 24 hours, I just gobbled it up. No breaks. So I feel like there's probably a lot of stuff that I missed because I sped through this book so fast because it was just so unputdownable. I just could not put it down. So I'm excited to reread this and see if I can notice anything that I maybe missed or forgotten. And I just can't wait for Akiva. Oh my god. I love this book so much. I also started reading Deathly Hallows the other night. Um, did not get far at all. I'm on page 16. So, uh, they're all at the Malfoy house. And that teacher is floating above the table. And, um, Voldemort is asking to see, um, Malfoy's wand. Like, Lucius Malfoy. So that's happening. And there was like a moment where Lucius thought that Voldemort was going to give him his wand because he's taking Lucius's mount wand. So he like looks at Voldemort's wand and is like, oh my god, are you going to give that to me? And Voldemort's like, <laughs> I love this. So I'm excited. I might read more of this tonight. I don't know. I really do want to finish this this month, but it's it's really it's really big, and I don't want to rush it. I, I feel like I could also finish Freddy vs. Jason because I have I am halfway. I don't have much left. It's a small book. The font is like I guess it's like average size. I don't know. So this could definitely help me achieve my goal for six or sorry five more books this month. Um, and I also have Shadow Kiss lined up to listen to. So excited. Also, I'm realizing that most of the books on my TBR are all somehow related or have something in common with City of Bones. So, first of all, this one is just a bit of a stretch, but Daughter of Smoke and Bone, City of Bones, they both have bone in the title, and in the, the first chapter, the word mundane is used like twice, and mundane always makes me think of the Marvel Instruments because before I read that, this book, I didn't really know what that word meant and I never really heard it before. So there's that. Also, they have the, uh, in here, there's the, these Hamza tattoos that remind me of the clairvoyance rune that are that is on the back of the Shadowhunter hands that look like an eye. So there's that relation. 
also for Shadow Kiss, which is on my shelf. I'm not going to get it. It's from Vampire Academy. And the relation there is that the guy who played Jace in the TV show played Christian Ozera in the Vampire Academy movies. And I love him a lot. <laughs> and then obviously there was a relation between Harry Potter and City of Bones because this is kind of known as being like a Harry Potter fanfic a little bit. And also the guy who played jace in the movie for this played grindelwald i think in deathly hollows like the movie deathly hollows specifically this book so everything is just everything is just relating to this book and i love it totally accidental i think that would be a pretty good idea for like a tbr game where you pick one book and then from there you have to make make it is it called ladders i think it's called ladders where i know it's a word game like you say a sentence and then one word has to be connected to another sentence and then you know what i mean am i make, making sense i think that's the game anyways where you like you pick a book and then you somehow pick another book that kind of relates to this book so having bone in the title so this would be this book and then from here on you'd say okay this is blue find a blue book you know what i mean something like that i think i'm gonna do that that could be really fun yes yes <laughs> So today is Sunday, November 8th, and this morning I woke up and I read one chapter from each of these books. Just one, because, yeah, just one. Um, and yeah, first I read some of Freddy vs. Jason, and I am now on page 117 of, how much is in here, 267 or something like that? Also, something that really irks me is the way that they spell epilogue and prologue. Does that not, like, look weird to you? Isn't it supposed to be G-U-E? Or is that just me? Like, I really feel like they spelled it wrong. <laughs> Maybe there's, like, a American way? Yeah, see, because in this one, that's how they spell epilogue here. So, whoever wrote Freddy vs. Jason, who wrote this? Um, Stephen Hand. He did it wrong. So the chapter here, um, the girl named Gib, who is our main character's, one of my main character's best friends, um, she got really drunk at a party and went wandering and wandered into a, like, boiler room because they're having a, a party out in the cornfield and there's a silo there and she walks into the silo and it turns out to be a boiler room and that's where she meets Freddy vs. Jason. No, sorry. And that's where she meets Freddy, and then we later find out that she actually fell asleep or like passed out in the middle of the field, in the, like just lying in the field, and now she's dreaming that she's in the spoiler room. And right when, right when Freddy is about to kill her, she starts coughing up blood, and like a red splotch, like a red patch of blood, just starts growing in her chest, and then she like fades out of the dream, and Freddy's like losing his mind because he was about to kill her but jason got to her first he found her passed out body in the field and yanked her <laughs> so yeah this is when it gets heated because freddy brought jason back just to bring the fear of freddy back so that people of elm street will start fearing him again not to start killing all of his victims he wants to kill them and now jason is getting a little too comfortable he had one job and now he has overstepped the line so now we're getting into the freddy versus jason aspect and this is a lot of fun it's horribly written like the writing is not good at all and if i hadn't like already seen this movie before i probably wouldn't continue on because the writing is just absolute garbage but because i've seen the movie and i already like know everything that's going to happen it's just like nostalgic and fun 
remembering it's really bringing me back to the days when I used to watch this on repeat at an age where I did not have any business watching a movie like this because nudity glower, gore glower, just x-rated all over. <laughs> Harry Potter. I am on page 30, chapter 3, so um, Harry just read a few articles from the Prophet, the Daily Prophet. One of them by Rita freaking Skeeter. No, it's not by Rita Skeeter, but whoever wrote it is interviewing her. And she is releasing a book about the life of Dumbledore. What is it called? The Life and Lies of Albus Dumbledore. I freaking hate her. Remember in, what was it called? The fourth book, Goblet of Fire, when she got turned into the beetle and they put her in the jar. And I was just really trying to channel my tele, 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 tele wow telepathy 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 wow the struggle was so real just then <laughs> i was really trying to channel my telepathy into the book and tell these characters throw this beetle off the bridge like throw her into the freaking ocean accidentally step on her she is useless she is useless i hate her so much she's just disgusting <laughs> The next chapter is called Dursley's, The Dursley's Departing, so I'm pretty sure that's when he's going to say goodbye to his uncle and aunt and his cousin, and then the gang is going to come in and turn into a bunch of different Harrys. Oh my gosh, I love that part in the movie, so I'm really excited to see that part in the book, and that is when the owl dies, I'm pretty sure. Crap, just remembered that. Also, I totally forgot that, um, what's her face? Tonks is Draco's cousin because Be um, Voldemort was talking to Bellatrix saying congratulations about what happened with the family and Bellatrix is like what? and he's like didn't your niece marry that werewolf? and I was like oh my gosh <gasps> Tonks I forgot so yeah that's great love this book and the last update for Daughter of Smoke and Bone I'm also not very far into this um, I'm on page 41 chapter 6 um it's really just there's not much has happened it's just we are now getting a glimpse of the fantastical elements of this book because in the beginning she's really just in her normal Czech world the mundane world and now it's starting to um, show elsewhere and brimstone and the monsters that she draws in her sketchbooks and how they're not just part of her imagination they are real and ah uh, Issa and Twigga and Yasri. I forgot all about them. I didn't forget about Issa, but I forgot about Yasri and Twigga. And I forgot how like scary Brimstone is, like his body. Huh? <laughs> so that's all I have to update you guys with my books. Um, today is November 8th and got seven. The members have started releasing the poster for their comeback. <clears throat> I'm fine. It's fine. Um, I'm thinking this is going to be the last clip of the vlog because it is Sunday and I don't see myself updating anything tomorrow because I'm working. So yeah, this is the end. I hope you guys enjoyed. It feels good to be filming again and reading a lot. I love reading and I've missed reading. But I also don't regret the break I took because within that break, I fell into a lot of K-pop holes and started really loving new groups. They're not new, but like they're new to me. So ATs, EXO, um, Super M, they all have like a really prominent space in my heart right now. And that's because of the break I took from reading. So no regrets, but it's back to business, reading all the books. I'm ready. Let's do it. Here we go. Hope you guys are reading some amazing books. Let me know what you guys are reading. And yeah, I will see you guys in the next one. Bye!